Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about employees. This is going to be the Employee 101 episode. So if you have employees or you're looking to get employees, this is going to be a great episode of WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Uh, My name is Jersey, by the way. I've owned a window cleaning company for quite a long time, 16 years, in fact, before I sold. And now I am a rep with windowcleaner.com, and I do this podcast. That is super awesome, or at least mediocre. If it's your first time here, have a look around. Go back, watch, listen to all these episodes. Five years of content. We've been doing this a ton, a ton of time. Um, If you've not your first time and you're just an OG uh, or an OWC, an original window cleaner. You've been here all the time. You are one of the cool kids, meaning you buy your supplies through me. Huh? Shameless plug. Well, thank you. I say it all the time, but I don't know that you to get it. But all of you who are out there who listen to this and like it and send me messages and say, hey, I like this podcast. I just want to say what's up. Thank you guys for just introducing yourselves Thank you to everybody who uses me as a rep. Um, That's how I make my cheddar. It doesn't cost you anything extra. If you haven't tried it yet, my number is 862-312-2026. I want to be your guy. I literally do. Big orders, small orders. I want to put all your orders in. Just shoot me a text and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. And that's it. I get credit for it. It's like a virtual high five of awesomeness. And it just means that you become an epic cool kid. Which, by the way, we have a custom sticker that we make. We're on version three right now. If you've gotten all three versions of the Cool Kids sticker, you should post it and be absolutely uh, blow me away like that. But let me put your orders in. That's my shameless plug number one. Um, Shameless plug number two is, of course, the upside down, (laughs) right side up, American Window Cleaner Magazine. Yes, a magazine, a real magazine that is paper and it is real, and it comes to your door every single month, and even better. Look at these stickers, huh? We have like thousands and thousands of stickers. We love stickers here. It's a culture thing. I want everybody to be proud of being a window cleaner. I love the industry. I know you love the industry. That's where all these stickers come from. Uh, these are what call, we, are, we call bucket stickers, so people put them on their buckets. They put them on everything. By the way, this is a new uh, sticker sheet that no one has ever seen, by the way. This is a, uh, uh, a new sticker sheet that's going out in the next issue or the second issue. We do two in a... And I make all the stickers. So anyway, shameless plug done. But let me do all that. I do want to give some shout-outs to some of the most amazing people. Uh, when you do put orders in with me, I randomly choose three people just to say what's up. And this week, it's Steve Donahue, who is absolutely amazing. Scott Trula, what's up, man? And, uh, of course, Charles Olson, who uh, every time I get to meet him, he just makes me happy. He's like one of the most uh, good-hearted people ever and uh, super awesome guy. So, anyway, speaking of meeting uh, me or meeting each other, uh, I'll be at IWCA next week. Uh, it is going to be in Vegas this year, um, and I'll be there Tuesday through Friday, I think. So, if you're there and you listen to the podcast, be like, yo, what's up? I'm a cool kid, and let me know. So anyway, longest intro ever today, I'm sorry. But today we are talking about employees. And a big thing that you need to know with employees is just what they are. People get scared of employees that haven't hired employees, and people are more nervous about uh, employees that even have employees. And unless you're a big company who's using a firm, there's so many little pieces to employees or having employees that you may not be aware of. One of the big things is getting into employees is where to start, right? If you've never had employees, maybe you're looking at it, you're looking at getting into them, you just, you don't know, how do I do this, right? And a lot of times people try to do the whole cash thing or pay it on the table or just write it. Don't do that. I'm telling you right now, I hope you get something out of this episode. But if you do, and you're paying your people under the table, stop it. Stop it. There's so many bad things that are going to happen. There is zero times, zero times 
that you can legally pay someone under the table. If it's if you're gonna pay this person a total in a fiscal year of over, I think it's six hundred bucks or something, six ninety nine. I have to check. I think they just changed it. If you're paying somebody over that amount, you cannot pay them cash. You can't. Yeah, yeah, but we use subs. We we sub the work out, so we no, no. The legalities of sub work, by the way, a subcontractor is what that is. But a subcontractor is basically somebody that you can pay directly, but they have to provide everything. The laws, basically a subcontractor is if you sub work to a company. So you could hire XYZ window cleaning to be your sub, but you can't ha hire Tony Smith, right? It has to be a company. You can't have them wear your logo or even represent your company. They can't use your tools or vehicles. They cannot be told what time they have to show up or what time they can leave. They cannot be told a time to, to, to get the job done. There's so many legalities. And if you just do one of them, all of a sudden they're not a subcontractor. They are an employee and you have to pay them legally as an employee. And paying somebody as an employee is not hard, right? I personally have never thinking back. I've never paid somebody as an employee myself directly. So you can use QuickBooks and things like that, but there's so many little pieces to it that I'll always use an agency or I'll always use a temp service. And we're going to talk about that later, how to hire people. But let's just jump into it, right? Is it time to hire? So this is everybody. Even if you're listening and you're like, I got employees, I don't really need this episode. But let's hang out. Let's hang out. Um, but even if you have employees already, the big thing is, is that are you ready for more employees? <clears throat> and more employees in general goes from hiring, having nobody to hiring one, that's more, <laughs> or hiring, you have 10 employees, you're going to 11, right? The biggest catch 22 in employment in general, and the hardest part for you to answer is the, is it time? Here is the catch 22. Now, this number gets smaller if you got 50 employees and you're adding one. You're only really adding on 1 the the workforce. <clears throat> but if you're out there doing it yourself, or maybe you have a helper, which, by the way, how are you paying that helper? Um, but if you have that and you're like, I really need a full-time employee, but I don't know that I'm there yet. There is no perfect time because you will never be working 80 hours a week yourself in order to break off into yours 40 hours and their 40 hours, right? You're more than likely working, say, 50 hours or even 45 hours or heck, even 40. And you're like, dude, I need to get somebody. True. I love being able to have uh, an employee who is out there doing the window cleaning with you because it allows you to free up some of your time, do some more valuable office stuff, <clears throat> doing sales and everything else. And that is more valuable than doing the tech work of actually cleaning a window. So when you put that out there that way, it's always a great time to hire. But the big thing is the catch 22 comes in is that when you split that, you're not really able to give them 40 hours a week right away, unless you're pulling yourself completely out of the field. But if you're splitting it, say you have one employee, now you're hiring another one. You guys are really busy, but you can't take that employee. I mean, the only option is to split it to some degree or and this is why people say this, or pay both of them to do the work because they're getting trained. So 20, uh, 40 hours split in two with a new guy is not 20 and 20. What it is is like 30, 32 hours for both of them each. And the reason is because everything goes slower. It all goes slower. There may be two people, but it goes slower. So with it going slower, you're training. It costs you money to do that. You're not going to make produ production, right? But if it's that time where you need to hire, do it. Do it because it allows you then to pack in the schedule. It allows you to shorten your calendar. So maybe you're booked out six weeks right now. Maybe you're booked out two months, three months, four months. I know guys that are booked out until fall already. And I'm recording this in January. Do what you want. I'm just a guy. But don't do that, <laughs> in my opinion. Hire because then you can shorten those time windows up. I'm telling you if you're waiting that long... Most of the time, unless you're doing all repeat work and people are just getting on that rotation, you're doing the dentist clothes, which is amazing. Most people aren't going to call you and go, hey, I need my widow's clean. You're like, oh, great. How's September? Oh, sure. Yeah. No, that's too far. They're going to go find somebody else. So hiring brings that in, right? If you have 
three months of work booked, you hire another person, you could technically reschedule all that stuff down into a month and a half. You hire another person, now you had three months, goes down into one month, right? As you shrink that down, it closes the gap. Now, I know that you're going to be slow. We're a seasonal business. It's the same thing with anybody who works in lawn care. They know that hours are going to change in the winter. There's seasonal unemployment. There's a lot of things that you can do. People are always held up going, well, yeah, I'm really busy now. and I'm really busy in fall. I'm really busy in spring, but I'm really slow in the winter. So it's not a good time. Well, that's not really how this goes. What is going to happen regardless, you guys that have 50 employees know this, you're slow or slower regardless of how many employees you have and regardless of how big you are and regardless of your area there are times where you're just a little slower than other times i have yet to meet a company who is doing the exact same hours every single week of the exact same year and even in those places that have really uniform weather it's just it's just not happening right so we just have to be okay with that that's hiring if it's time to hire the biggest thing to do is just do it do it because it allows you then to put more stuff on there. It allows you to go chase more stuff because it frees up some time, right? But we talked about this before. There's a few different types of employees. Now, employee versus subcontractor, we already talked about that, right? A subcontractor, I know that is some people's models, but I'm telling you, don't go that route. There is the benefits do not at all outweigh the benefits of having them as an employee. The reason is, if you're hiring another company, so uh, a lot of us are subbing work for, say, another company that maybe doesn't do route work and we're, we're picking up their route, we do all their route. That's real subbing because they're sending your company the money, right? But in an employee situation, one single person, um, there was a franchise that used to do the same model. The government is making it really, really, really hard to do subs. The reason is because they're not getting their money. I'm not a conspiracy mood, but here's the thing. If I pay somebody as a sub, now it's on them to have to pay their taxes, right? And for the most part, they're probably not going to do it quite right a lot of times. But if you do it as an employee, now there's employment tax on top of the tax they pay, right? So they make it super, super hard. Then they can track everybody. They can get their money that's uh, that they feel is owed all of that. So they make it really, really hard to go sub. So in the employee world, there's two main types of employees. There's an hourly, well, we'll say there's three, but there's hourly and there's commission. And then the third one's really salary, but um, usually I do know a lot of companies that do salary, but we'll talk about that one last. But an hourly employee is just that. They show up to work, they punch in, they leave, they punch out, right? Pros and cons. Pros of an hourly, hourly, hourly employee <laughs> is that uh, they will work for the clock, right? So if they're doing a job, you could argue that maybe they're spending a little bit more time there and they're milking the clock because they get paid more. Well, okay, I get that. If you have a tight schedule, they obviously have to keep that schedule, right? But my pro for that is that if I have them doing things, window cleaning, I could have them do gutter cleaning or house washing or soft washing or any of that stuff because now their hour is mine. What I do with that is up to our agreement with them, right? And I feel like that's the fairest way is to do it that way, right? Because um, if you are there, right, we have an office, so they show up to the office and get the trucks ready. But when they show up, they punch in as soon as they walk in the door. Now they can get the trucks ready to do their thing, but they're on the clock. They're making some time. They're making some money. As a sub, uh, not a sub, uh, commission-based, the big part of that is, is that when they do a job, they make a percentage, but it's still paid as an employee. You can still pay them as commission. So what they'll do is say 38%, super common in the industry. They make 38% of the job, right? That's their... Uh, commission rate. Now, when they show up to a job and the job is $100, they make $38. So that job that they just did has to be done in X amount of time for it to make sense to them, right? If they rush through it and don't do it well, they make the same amount of money as if they take the time and do it right. 
if they get callbacks, they have to go back to that callback for free because they've already been paid for that job. You're paid to complete the job. If as a commission-based person, they don't do the job and they have to go back, then they don't make money, which means that they really don't want to have to go back because they're spending a lot of time to do that. But then it also doesn't make a great arrangement when you have them do something, even though it's their issue, but having them do it for free. The other thing is on a commission-based person, you can't have them do anything extra, right? If I have hourly people and they get done a little early, it's like, oh, cool, let's let's uh, clean out the trucks. Let's, um, you know, maybe uh, today we're going to, um, you know, go over the trucks or do this or we're going to uh, go through equipment or we're going to um, clean the shop or whatever. We get shop hours, guys like that, when they want to make a little bit more cheddar if there's a rain day or something like that. In a commission-based structure, you can't do that. They can't really prep a truck. Or they can, they're going to do it super fast because they're not getting paid for it. Also, if I take an employee, if I take an employee and send them an hour away to do a job, they made money sitting in the truck. If I send a commission person an hour away, they make money on that job if it's an hour away or a minute away. <clears throat> So if you're doing route and you see this more in route is they will do commission based in route because they're allowed to open up that zone a little bit more and still make a profit. If I get a job an hour away or I get a job a minute away, for me as the business owner, if your commission doesn't matter to me, doesn't matter. Like you're going to drive an hour, but it doesn't cost me any extra, right? But that's not a great work setup. That's why I don't like that, that concept. It's a lot easier. You get a lot more perks to have the hourly. There's no wrong way to do it, but you need to find out what is really best for you. You also need to find the people who you're hiring what they would like to do. Um, unfortunately, <clears throat> never ask them. Uh, well, you can once you get to know them, but a lot of times you say, okay, well, as commissioned, you make more. You can make more. But the problem is, is that there's so many other things you're not getting. You're not getting extra duties, you're not doing anything, you don't get paid for drive time, you don't, all that stuff. You don't get paid for details. But if you're just like, you get paid more, then they want to do that without really realizing it's just a, a worse off deal, in my opinion. Hourly, it's like, guess what? If you're here, you're making money, no matter what. I think it's a better deal. It's easier to track. Commission becomes a little bit hard when you track those because, again, you have to pay somebody minimum wage. It's called minimum wage. If you're doing commission and something weird happens, which is pretty rare, but if something weird happens and they work 10 hours, they have to make at least a minimum wage. So now you have to configure that and you have to figure out how many hours were worked to compare that to the dollar amount and obviously then you can figure out what their commission price was for that job. Breaking it up is a little bit harder. What happens if two people are on the job? Do they still make the money? What happens if you show up on the job? Do they still make the same? Maybe they make less. Well, then when do you come? When do you leave? What do you do? It just gets a little sloppy, in my opinion. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and comment and tell me what you do. If you have employees or what you think is a better option, because I would love to know. But that's the type of employees, right? We have commission. We have hourly. And salary is uh, the best for everybody, um, but the hardest on the business owner. And the way a commission is, is, say you wanna make, you wanna pay your tech X, X amount per hour. Figure it out, what it is, 40 hours a week, break it down into 52 weeks, right? If you do um, vacation or stuff, it's still 52 weeks, you're paying for vacation. Now, break that down into your weeks, again, right? 40 hours times that, You've, you've figured out your week. They're going to get that every week, regardless if it's winter, if it's spring, if they're busy, if it's not, if you're gone, if you're there, if you work, if it's rain, if it's nothing, right? They're guaranteed that money, which, by the way, is nice for them because rain days don't matter. Winter, they can make it through the winter making the same paycheck. But they're, again, trading their time. It has to be 40 hours. What are they going to do for 40 hours that week? If there's nothing to do, they're not going to do anything but still make 40 hours of pay. Now, the benefit in salary, real quick, is that you can take that instead of saying, okay, we know that you're not going to do 40 hours, but I can have a dollar amount in my head. I can plan that entire year with a dollar amount, right? And then from there, you fill it, make it busy. But then here's the thing. 
it costs you nothing extra to have that person working more than 40 hours. That's the downside because you don't necessarily want to exploit them in that scenario, but you're also maxing them out because it's salary. So usually it's like a, a an operations officer or something that can run the whole thing because they're always doing stuff even if it's not in the field, if that makes sense. Anyway, um, but where to find people? You know what kind of people you're looking for. You've decided now if it's going to be an uh, employee um, on commission or an employee in an hourly or an employee on salary. You know that part. But where do you find employees? Everywhere. Everywhere. Yes, LinkedIn works. Yes, uh, ZipRecruiter works. Yes, Indeed works. Yes, Craigslist works. Yes, uh, military bases work. ROTCs, uh, high schools, um, college um, uh, bulletin boards. Everywhere works. It's just what you are putting out there. I'm going to tell you right now, to build a great resume capturing post is key. Don't ever put, we're looking for hardworking people who, who show up on time. And, and, and like, all you're doing is telling them, just making it like, oh, this guy is just like, of course they show up on time. Of course they're hardworking. Everybody thinks they're hardworking. You don't put in there like, we're looking for a hard work. And they're, somebody's reading, they go, well, that's not for me. Because even lazy people think they're hardworking. Right? Don't put all that stuff. Don't make it sound like you are in a cold dungeon and you have, you know, the, the, the overpowering hand to make things happen. Don't do that. You want awesome people. Awesome people are awesome. You can get an awesome person, which I know a lot of us say is hard. It's how you get the resumes. Make it sound fun. Why does somebody want to work for you? Again, we've talked about this in other things, but to work for you is a paycheck. To work for the next guy is a paycheck. It's the reason people work. It's for the paycheck. So don't talk about, oh, they're lucky to have this job or I'm paying them. That's what they, everybody's paying them. What do you offer that the others don't? Awesome work environment. Man, we have ping pong tournaments. I got a stocked fridge every day for you guys. Like we do Friday uh, afternoons. We all meet for free food, hang out a bit before we leave. Like chill environment, awesome team, super great people. What do you offer? Remember, you think that they, you're doing them a favor, but you're not. They're doing you a favor. They're doing you a favor by being awesome. And I've had crap employees. I know you. If you've had employees, you've bound to have some. Some people interview really well. Some people interview very, very poorly. I've had people where I've fired and rehired them and then just to realize I should have kept them fired and had to fire them again. Unfortunately, that's employment. Not everybody's a perfect fit for everything. That's obvious and we know that. But we want to sell why they should work for us. Because if I make it sound super awesome, I'm gonna get a better person because the better person knows they could get any job, right? Think about this. I know if I went somewhere right now, I could get pretty much any job on my communication skills, personality, my interview. I don't think I'd have a problem with anything, right? I may not be qualified for a doctor but a lot of stuff I feel like I would do very, very well. So if that is where I am, and I'm just one of the many, many people, which most people think that, I'm going to pick and choose what I want to work. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to apply at places that I want the job. They have to want your job to apply. That's how you get great. Put in there something awesome. In the very beginning, I always put looking for awesome. Are you Superman? Something along those lines, right? Put something in there that shows your personality, that shows you can have fun, that shows you're not in a, you know, cold, damp basement with chains on the wall. Like, no one, you don't need to tell them to be a hard worker. You don't need to tell them that they need to be drug free. You don't need, I, I know. If you don't want them to do drugs on the job, no one does. But guess what? You don't have anything to say about them when they're not at work. 
If it doesn't interfere with work, it's their life. You don't own their life. You own an hour of their time. So why put all this stuff other than just to make it sound like you're just this guy? And even if you've had bad experience, right? Have you ever seen those dating apps or, or somebody making a post? It's like, I don't want this person. I want this. Like they've had crap in the past and they think that that's the way they're going to find the better person because everybody's so eager to date them or so eager to get your fabulous job that they're going to look and go like, must not do drugs. Yes. Okay. Okay. I got one. Must be a hard worker. I'm a hard worker. Oh, I'm almost there. No. You're selling the job to them. There's lots of places hiring. You ever look out there how many places they're hiring? There's a lot of places hiring. And if you've heard, there's more places hiring than there are people out there that are looking. Yes, I know unemployment's there, but look at the numbers. Look how hard it is for people to find anybody right now. How many restaurants are low? Right? Make your, your, your hiring ad, your employment ad, fun. It has to be awesome and it has to sell why somebody works there. If you talk to anyone who's having problems hiring, their main issue is their employment ad. Read it. It's garbage. Here's a fun thing. I don't ever have homework for you guys and gals. I just don't because that's stupid, but I have something for you to do. If you're looking at hiring, I have the most interesting thing that you'll ever do to open your eyes. It takes two seconds. Go on to Indeed. Uh, Indeed is like a hiring service. Monster.com, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, any of those. Pretend you're looking for a job and type in, hmm, type in window cleaning. Type in uh, lawn care. Type in something that you see a lot of things out there, a lot of, lot of ads. And just open them up and read. And I will tell you that 99.99% of them are the exact same thing. XYZ Lawn Care. Looking for somebody with a valid driver's license, preferable experience, willing to train, great bonuses, pay as well. No drugs, no alcohol, can't smoke them. Every ad is that. Read it. Well, if I'm looking for a job and... I am like everybody out there, and I think I'm awesome. I'm going to read that and be like, ugh. Well, I want lawn care. I don't care. Click. That's who you're getting. That's who you're getting when you say, oh, man, there's nobody else. It's how you're asking. If you put an awesome ad, if you put in the front, are you Superman, right? If you put looking for the most awesome person in XYZ City, Whatever. First off, people are going to look. We are the best local window cleaning company around. Been in business for five years. We love what we do and we have a ton of fun doing it. Our job is a low stress, awesome environment of a really cool group of people. We have a fully stocked fridge that you could take anything out from Gatorade to water to uh, energy drinks. We have free lunch on Fridays just as a thank you. You get bonused and tipped almost daily. We have ping pong tournaments once a month with all the, with all the techs. If you want to have a job that you like going to, well, I want to introduce you to our awesome team. Love the people you work with. Love what you do and enjoy doing it. If you are awesome, reply to this with your resume and tell me a little bit about yourself. And in the subject line, put, I am awesome. That's it. That's it. I didn't tell you to show up on time. I didn't tell you, oh, we're window cleaning. You can't be scared of heights. You can't. We'll get to that. No one is hired applying at a window cleaning place. If they're scared of heights, I'm going to weed that out anyway. But I'm going to get a ton of people who are like, oh, this place sounds kind of fun. That sounds good. Cool. Yeah. You know? So 
putting it out there allows them to come to you. The more applications you get, the better your hiring will be. The name of the game is to get great people, and it's also to get a ton of people. There's a lot of times where you get applications because your ad is so good. You get people way overqualified. They just want to be a part of this fun thing. I've had people, I've had three different times, I've had somebody send me an email saying, hey, I'm not looking for manual labor at all. I do this X, Y, and Z, but I just wanted to say your ad is awesome. I've had that three times. Now this is over probably five year span. But I've had that happen where people took the time to reply just to say the ad was awesome, right? Your ad is what gets people to find the people. It's not as scary as you want. But hiring somebody through an agency is going to be so much easier. Just find a local, uh, uh, either a temp agency, which I've talked about a billion times. Uh, go back, you can listen on that. Or find an employment agency. They'll take care of the paperwork and all the hard stuff. And you go find great people. But you have to put the ad out there. And February, March, that's the time to hire. Because we're going to be busy super, super fast. But we need to hire people before we're busy. For when we are. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully you go and get employees or improve your employees or get more employees. But hopefully this helps you either way. And like I said, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. 50% 50% of why I do this, well, probably more than that, 75% of why I do this is to help people. I think it's really, really awesome that I can talk to people about this industry that I love and people get something out of it. So that's really the reason I do it. But another part of it is because then you know who I am. And if you know who I am, you want to buy your supplies through me because that's how I make my cheddar in life is I put orders in for people and I help people and I make great decisions for people. And that's just what I do. So if I could put your order in for you, which I hope I can, it's 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. So you text me, call me, whatever. Ask me questions. Let's get big or small orders and be absolutely amazing. And uh, another way is I uh, bought American Window Cleaner Magazine. You've seen it. Lots of people talk about it. We've like four or 500% in uh, increase in... Um, People who have subscribed since I bought it two years ago. It's absolutely freaking amazing. And I want you to get the magazine too. I don't know why you're waiting. Magazines are cool. Yes, this one is absolutely cool. And you'll be absolutely cool for getting it. By the way, if you're watching this right now, the sale won't go on forever. But uh, you can get any sticker sheet on the site right now. AWCMAG.com for $1. So stock up on stickers, but get the magazine. Then you need to get all the new sticker sheets, all the new stickers, all the magazine, the posters, the articles, the everything. Just go to awcmag.com and get the magazine. I see everybody who comes in, so I want to see your name come across when you subscribe. So anyway, that's our show. Hopefully you got something out of it, but more importantly, hopefully you go out there and be epic. <laughs>